Welcome to another AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. We're going to address basic drilling fluids concepts in hopes that we can tackle far more complex problems in the future. Viscosity and its measurement is one of the most fundamental yet critical fluid properties as it relates to drilling fluids. Within the industry, it can be termed as a property of a fluid that indicates its resistance to flow, expressed as the ratio of shear stress to shear rate with centipoise being the standard unit of measurement. Imagine as a fluid flows through an annular space at a given force, there is an opposing force which is termed the shear stress. As shear stress is applied, fluids slide or move past one another at various rates. Consider this illustration where the fluid highlighted in red moves at a much slower rate compared to other layers of fluid due to the resistance seen along the walls of the pipe. Shear rate can be calculated as the difference in velocities between the two layers of fluid as they move past each other over a given distance. A common method to measure viscosity on a rig site is termed the funnel viscosity. Funnel viscosity is determined by recording the amount of time it takes to pass a fixed volume of mud, one quart, through a marsh funnel. It is a quick check that can show trends or changes, but oftentimes is overemphasized and relied upon too much. Because viscosity is a function of both temperature and pressure, funnel viscosity falls short of providing a constant and accurate measurement of a given fluid's true viscosity. To be meaningful, viscosity measurements should specify shear rate, temperature, and pressure if other than atmospheric. This graph shows various data points of funnel viscosity across a wide range of mud weights and further underlines the shortcomings of the measurement. A much more accurate method of measuring viscosity is performed on a six-speed viscometer. The viscometer is a rotational type of instrument that is powered by an electric motor. An outer cylinder sleeve is rotated in a drilling fluid at fixed RPMs which produces torque on an inner bob cylinder. The tension created as the fluid passes by the bob in this inner annulus is transmitted to an attached torsion spring. This is connected to a dial readout, which is calibrated to provide constant measurements. A heat cup is used to hold the volume of fluid and provide a heat source to maintain a constant temperature, typically measured at 120 or 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The dial readouts can then be used to generate common viscosity measurements, such as plastic viscosity, measured by subtracting the 600 RPM readout from the 300 RPM readout. Plastic viscosity is a function of the amount of mechanical friction within the fluid, often related to the amount of solids present. The yield point, which is the second component of a fluid's resistance to flow, is related to the attractive forces at play in a fluid. It can be calculated by subtracting the plastic viscosity value from the 300 RPM readout. An HPHT viscometer is sometimes used in laboratories to provide high temperatures and pressures in order to more fully understand a given fluid's viscosity under these conditions. The equipment allows the user to input a schedule of well-specific pressures at given temperatures. The generated data can be aggregated and help to support known rheological models and accurately predict hydraulics. Fluids in general can be classified as either Newtonian or non-Newtonian. Newtonian fluids are the simplest class of fluids. Examples of Newtonian fluids include water and seawater, and base oils such as diesel, mineral, and synthetic oils. These fluids have a constant viscosity at a given temperature and pressure. In other words, the shear stress is directly proportional to shear rate. In this case, when shear rate is doubled, the shear stress is also doubled. Unlike Newtonian fluids, non-Newtonian fluids shear stress is not directly proportional to shear rate. In other words, non-Newtonian fluids do not have a constant viscosity that describe its behavior at all shear rates. Most non-Newtonian fluids exhibit shear thinning behavior such that viscosity decreases as the shear rate increases. As fluid is pumped at higher rates through the drill string and bit, 
it shear thins to a lower viscosity. At lower velocities in the annulus, the viscosity of the fluid is higher, providing hole cleaning. And at very low or no velocity, such as when you stop pumping, the fluid develops gel strengths that contribute to suspending weight material and cuttings. There are many rheological models which help predict fluid behavior across a wide range of shear rates. We will describe the most common models as it pertains to drilling fluids. The Bingham plastic model, named after the chemist Eugene C. Bingham, who proposed its mathematical model, is one of the older rheological models that is still often used. The model essentially describes a fluid which requires a certain amount of force to initiate flow, termed tau y, and provides a constant viscosity with increasing shear rate. Most drilling fluids are not true Bingham plastic fluids. The model is typically used with cement fluids or gel slurries. The power law model attempts to address the shortcomings of the Bingham plastic model as it does not assume a linear relationship between shear stress and shear rate. The model depicts a fluid where the shear stress increases as a function of the shear rate, which has been raised to a certain power. However, similar to Newtonian fluids, the plots of shear stress versus shear rate for power law fluids goes through the origin. It factors in a consistency index termed K and the power law index termed N. One shortfall of power law is that it does not fully describe a given drilling fluid's yield stress and low shear rate viscosities. The power law model can be used to more accurately describe the behavior of some polymer-based drilling fluids that do not exhibit yield stress, which can include some fluids viscosified with biopolymers, i.e. viscosified clear brines. The Herschel-Bulkley, also termed modified power law, builds upon the conventional power law model by accounting for the stress required to initiate fluid movement, i.e. the yield stress. As seen in this graph, the Herschel-Bulkley model incorporates the characteristics of both the Bingham plastic model and the power law model. The Herschel-Bulkley model is slightly more complicated in its calculation but it can arrive at a more accurate and true rheological prediction of most drilling fluids. It is the model officially used in API hydraulic calculations. It is important to note that the data provided by equipment mentioned earlier, such as the 6-speed viscometer and HTHP viscometer, is integral to building and running rheological models. After accurately modeling rheological properties of a given fluid and flow behavior is predicted, hydraulic calculations can be performed to model the fluid's effect on well pressures. From this, we can calculate pump pressures, pressure loss across the bit, and annular pressure loss termed equivalent circulating density or ECD. Hydraulics optimization can then be ran which involves balancing multiple factors including well control, well bore stability or mud weight, hole cleaning, which is a function of rheology pump rate and pipe rotation, pump pressure, ECD, and pressure drop across the bit. In summary, remember that viscosity is not a value which can be measured simply by running a funnel vis alone. That concludes this AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. Stay tuned for the next one, and if you want to learn more, have a listen to the flow line our podcast. And if you want to improve your drilling fluid performance, reach out to us at AES Drilling Fluids, where better fluids equal better wells.